Hi, it's Jan Beta, and as a retro computer enthusiast, I often experience memory problems. Not with my brain, but with uh, memory chips, of course. So I'm going to build a very cheap and uh, also inexpensive DRAM tester today. So here's the ingredients I'm going to use in their entirety. We need an Arduino Uno. Uh, this project also works with an Arduino Nano. We need a socket. I have a nice SIF socket here. Actually, it has too many pins. We only need a 16-pin socket. This is a 20-pin socket. Piece of perf board. This is copper clad from both sides. We need some headers, pin headers, standard size. I got a dual red and green LED with a common anode. You can also use two separate LEDs. We need a little jumper and we need some wire. And then the magic is in the software that we are going to program the Arduino with. Also optionally, a cup of coffee. Here's the project I'm going to build today. It's the DRAM Arduino DRAM tester with Arduino. And I found this at the Defense Force forums, uh, which is a forum for the Auric computer, which was a very nice looking, but super rare, at least here. I think it was uh, only sold in the UK originally. The Aurics are super nice looking computers, but not very well known outside the UK, I believe. So this is an Auric forum, but uh, this tester works for 4164 RAM, which is commonly used in a lot of machines from the 80s and early 90s, like the Commodore 64, for example. And it also works for 41256 RAM, which is commonly used in the older Amigas, for example, and many other systems, of course. So this is going to be relatively straightforward. It's just basically wiring up the sockets and two LEDs to the Arduino. And I'm going to use a perf board, which should be doable because I had that at hand, like most of the parts uh, I'm building this from, because this is kind of a spontaneous idea. Um, you can also, of course, use one of these pre-made head boards, which ISS, who invented this also used for their build. So yeah, I'm pretty much going to print this out, arrange my components on the perf board and wire this up. This is going to take maybe half an hour or something, wiring this up and then programming the Arduino. And then hopefully we are going to have a really handy DRAM tester. Yeah, and I forgot we actually also need three resistors, but these are common as mud parts. Uh, so you probably, as I do, have things in your parts bin that are usable for this project. And then you basically only need an Arduino, which most of you maybe also have in their parts bin somewhere. And yeah, I just ordered a very cheap, uh, not an original Arduino, but an Eligu, Eligu one uh, that should do the job fine. As I said, this can also be done with uh, an Arduino Nano. But I'm going to use this because I have it. And I'm going to cut the uh, perf board to size as my first step. There's also easier to build versions of this that have like a pre-made circuit board you can print out or have print out by your favorite circuit board manufacturer. <laughs> but I'm going to use what I have. So now for the pin headers, we need some of these, the square, square pin ones. So I'm just going to cut these to size with my 
side cutters. So, uh, as you can maybe see on camera, uh, these have a free spot in there, so we have to remove one pin or just cut it. Uh, I think I'm just going to cut it. Does this fit? Oh, it doesn't fit. It should be standard size. Let's cut this pin. Do we have non-standard measurements here? That sucks. Can we fit our perf board on there at all? Oh no! This doesn't fit the perf board. So this is going to be more challenging than I thought. I assumed this would fit the perf board, but it doesn't. What's going on? Why is that? I don't know. That's weird. That's super weird. Okay, let's cut this too. Okay, so I'm not very experienced, as you can probably tell, with Arduinos. But this is just why did they choose to make this a non-standard thing? I'm not sure. So I'm going to have to uh, work around that by probably bending the pins a bit. On the other side, with the voltages and the first analog inputs, it fits fine. It, it's just standard 2.54 millimeters uh, pitch. But on this side, it doesn't. What the heck? So, with some brute force, I managed to uh, fit these in here on the perf board. And they are actually uh, going into the other side of the pin headers here far enough so that they can actually make contact. Uh, you can remove this pin, obviously, we're going to do that. You can just pull them out. Sometimes it needs some heating up. But usually, they should just come out with some force. Again, some force. There we go. Did I mention this is going to be a bit of a hack job? This is going to be a bit of a hack job. Uh, I'm now just soldering the pins of the headers to the perf board. And they are at an angle, but it's going to be fine. And the socket, which thankfully fits the pitch, uh, is going to live in the center here. And I'm going to wire this up with wires from the back of this, from this perspective, and uh, solder the wires onto the pins with a little solder bridge from this side here. So yeah, let's do some wiring, I guess. So soldering in the socket. And it's super easy to build uh, unwanted bridges with a perf board. So you're probably better off getting a dedicated uh, Arduino header. But yeah, here's what we got, or I got. Soldering in the LED, I guess. That should be somewhere here. And we need a couple of resistors. And uh, actually, uh, in this design, which is kind of awkward, uh, the chip goes in with the notch facing this direction. I would have assumed the other direction. Usually I think this is not the way these sockets are used, but this goes in here like so. But yeah, I'm just going to mark that on the socket some way, I guess. Uh, so yeah, this is our wiring. Basically. So I wired up my uh, plus 5 volts from this pin here, which should be the 5 volt pin, 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, yes. And I wired it up both to the LED through a one kilo ohm resistor, uh, the common anode. These two resistors here, uh, I'm replacing that with the one K one. The original design uses 470 ohms, but my LED is particularly bright. So I'm just going one K there and try if that makes that problem a bit better. And I'm going to do all the connections that are laid out here, hopefully correctly. We also need to put another two pin header on here for a little jumper that switches between 4164 and 41256. So I'm just going to do one uh, montage here. <laughs> I guess. Putting another header on. Yeah, I think I want you about this being quite the hack job. Uh, this is the top side and this is the mess of wires on the bottom side. Hopefully this should be, even if this looks messy, <laughs> this should be a functional RAM tester. I'm going to check everything for shorts with my multimeter and then I'm going to check the connections uh, according to the schematics or the little diagram that I used to wire this up. And then we're going to program the Arduino and hopefully this is going to be a RAM tester in the end. Maybe this is going to work. So let's see. We need this in this direction, I guess. Let's check for shorts between the pins at first. Okay, we don't seem to have any shorts on this side. Okay, connections test. So this pin, which is VCC, should connect to here. Yes. 
this pin to A4, this pin to A3, A2, A1, A0. This side is good. Okay, this pin should be connected to pin 3 on this side. Yep. And this should be connected to ground, which it is. Seems to be connected correctly. Okay, let's program the Arduino. So I'm actually having to download the Arduino IDE, but that's just going to be a matter of minutes, hopefully. And it should install all the drivers you need to actually program this thing. Install drivers. Okay, we should be able to just plug our Arduino board in. It should load the driver, which it did, I think. And then we should be able to open up our Arduino IDE. Okay, we should be able to open our sketch that we downloaded. There's our sketch and we should be able to open that uh, to load it onto our Arduino Uno at port COM3. Upload. Let's see if that works. It's compiling. Oh, that was quick. Okay. 10% of our Arduino memory is used for this. So yeah, we should be good. Should have programmed the software. Yeah, we should uh, just be able to connect our little adapter board to this after we unplug it. And this should now be an autonomous device, basically. I should be able to power this from a USB power adapter now. Yay! And our green and red LED. We had a green light and we now have a red light, okay. Place the chip in the ZIF socket. And this should be placed like so. This is a broken uh, 4164 chip, by the way. And now I should be able to press the reset button. And that is red. Red, red light. Let's test this again. Yeah, this is uh, expected behavior. I guess I need a good RAM chip. <laughs> so here's a good DRAM chip. 4164 and pressing the reset button yeah and that actually lights up green nice okay it seems to work <laughs> let's let's do some more testing i guess let's test some 41256 shall we i don't think i have any broken 41256, but I have this uh, good 41256 RAM. Let's see what that says. Yep. And that tests good as expected with the jumper removed. This is very convenient, except for the reset button that starts the whole process being on the bottom there. That's the reset button on the Arduino. That's another 41256. That should also be good. Yep, it is. Yay, I made a thing. The thing is that this thing can read, sometimes can read things as good that aren't. But if it shows you a red light, the chip is definitely bad. So that's convincing. Already, I'm super glad that I built this. It's, it wasn't a horrible, horribly difficult build. I was just a bit confused with the wiring, but hey, the result is super nice. I'm just going to put some electrical tape over the pins that are not going to be used to prevent this from being used the wrong way, I guess. And I'm also going to mark the direction of the chip, which shall go here with the notch. 
Okay. Yeah, apart from uh, my LED being two LEDs in one, basically, and I only needed one resistor. But apart from that, I just went by the original design. I am, however, I think, going to put another reset switch on here. So the last thing I want to add is this uh, tactile button I found in my parts bin. I'm just going to use that. Of course, you could use a button that is actuated from the top side, but I had this lying around and I think the form factor makes it pretty easy to push it like this. And uh, that is going to be an external reset button. Uh, this is going to be wired up to the reset pin and the ground pin on this header here and should just act the same as the reset button on the Arduino just for ease of accessibility. I'm going to add this. Just going to nastily solder this onto here and wire it up from the bottom. Yeah, so this is the final product, if you will. Uh, it does look really messy. And uh, most of the wiring was done by uh, soldering this end on the SIF socket directly on the bottom side and then feeding the other end of the wires through here and wiring this side up to the pin headers actually. Same with the switch soldered on the bottom side, feeding the wire through to the top and soldering that to the connections on top there. Now we should have this uh, reset button here that should function the same as the reset button on the bottom, which makes this more usable. Yeah, this is a cheap way of achieving this, making a DRAM tester. Possibly the cheapest way to achieve this, especially if you, as I did, have many parts in your parts bin anyway. So some of these parts are super common, most of them actually. So uh, many of you, if you are a tinkerer like me, should have these components in your parts bin and you're going to be able to build something like this pretty easily with a bit of patience. So let's see if that reset button actually works. Inserting one of my broken 4164s. Should open the socket, close it, pushing the reset button. Yep, and it does work. And it shows as broken, as expected. So this is going to be super handy for future repairs. What does it do without anything, anything inserted there? It shows it's broken, as expected. Nice. Yeah, I guess that's it for today. I hope you found this informative and somewhat enjoyable. Hope you are not too disgusted by my quick and dirty soldering here. <laughs> I achieved what I wanted and I built a RAM tester for the lab, which is going to be an invaluable tool for me in the future, for future repairs. And of course, there are easier ways to achieve this. Uh, you can buy pre-made circuit boards that have the correct pin spacing and you just have to, and also the connections, of course, for this very model of the RAM tester, you just have to solder on some of the components here and have a working DRAM tester if you plug it into an Arduino. Yeah, this is, as I said, a dirt cheap way, especially if you have many of the parts laying around anyway, which you probably have if you are tinkering with old computers and electronics. Thank you very much for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page, and also for your comments and your thumbs and your subscriptions. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Also, optionally, cup of coffee. I spilled coffee all over the place.